Before you get started using the 17 hash product, and to be very specific, maybe after you've played with it some, and when you're ready to start building an actual workflow for yourself, it's important to outline your workflow in a document of some sort. My preference is Google Docs, you might want to do it in Word. It doesn't really matter where you do it. The point is, completely outside of the product itself, you want to list out all the steps. In this course, I'm going to use the example of a bookkeeping engagement, and I'm going to actually create the workflow in 17 hats for my very real onboarding process when I take on a new bookkeeping client. As I mentioned at the top of the course, it's important to use a real use case when you're building a workflow in 17 hats. So we're going to outline all the steps, and as you're going to see, when you do outline the steps, there are going to be several things you're going to want to identify step by step when you outline this process. Things like templates that need to be created, because there's going to be a step where an email has to go out to a client. So that email is a template that has to be created. There's going to be a to-do item that has to be taken care of at some point in the process. So that to-do item has to be identified and defined insofar as what will need to be created in 17 hats in order for your whole workflow to come together. So the first thing you're going to see in this lesson is how I outline the entire process and the second thing you're going to see is how I identify the things that we'll need to create in 17 hats so that in the next lesson we can go into 17 hats and start building what we need to do what's going to be covered in the final lesson which is actually putting together that workflow. I've seen a lot of questions asked out there about how to set up a good workflow in terms of an onboarding process. And this is outside of the context of 17 Hats, but just in general. Lots of accountants and bookkeepers that I talk to seem to need a lot of help in this area. We kind of have it in our brains, but actually getting it sort of translated into some kind of a linear kind of format where it's step by step. Here's what happens. Boom, 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 is where the challenges seem to lie. And 17 Hats is a great solution for handling that. But what I'm going to recommend and what this whole lesson is dedicated to is outlining your workflow and that means doing it outside of 17 hats first. So a while back before I got into 17 hats I did this on my own. I created a document because I realized that some clients were some clients got it right away. I'm obviously very app intensive and a lot of times I figure oh I just sent them in the invite they'll, they'll click on the invite for the app and they'll get it. It'll be clear. But that's not always the case. Not everybody understands these things the way that I do. And I realized that some clients were getting frustrated. They didn't understand what to do. It kind of looked cool. It looked like, all right, maybe this is cool, but they didn't really know how to use it. So I came up with this outline where I started describing step by step what has to happen. So that when a client calls me and says, yes, Seth, I think I'd like to move forward. Can you give me an estimate? I'm going to say, well, before I can give you an estimate, there's a few things that we'll need to do. I need to get some information from you so that if and when the time comes, I can populate a contract. I also need to review your books because I have no idea what to estimate until I've had a chance to go through your balance sheet and your profit and loss because that's what's going to help me get an idea of what the scope is on a bookkeeping engagement. And then based on that, I'll figure out what the monthly fee is going to be for the bookkeeping project. So I started sending them this document which outlines very clearly, first please give me this information, right? Then it lets them know, we're going to schedule a weekly call for the first four weeks. That actually comes later, and interestingly enough, I realized as I was putting the outline together for 17 Hats workflow purposes, um, that this is somewhat out of order, but it not, doesn't matter for this purpose. This is just to give the client kind of a high-level view of what's going to happen. But when it comes to workflow and creating the steps, you have to put things in the right order. And so again, creating this outline of your process before going into 17 Hats to do it will go a long way to make making the whole process of setting up your workflow much more smooth. And I'll show you what I mean. Let's go into 17 hats and let's say I want to go in and create a workflow. Now if I go over to templates, I created like a test sort of dummy workflow. And I suggest you do the same because what this enabled me to do while I was creating the outline that you're going to see in a minute is it enabled me to say, all right, if I am going to add a to-do item, what are my options here? A to-do item is pretty simple. It's just that, right? I can, I can create a description of what needs to be done, and I can decide when to activate it, and I can decide what to do when it's completed, right? So to-do items are pretty straightforward in terms of how they work. But then there's an action item. Right? So what are the actions I can perform? I can send an email, send a questionnaire, send a quote, send a contract, send an invoice. Right? So there's any number of things that need to get created. And as I'm going to create the outline, I can do that. But for example, if I say, okay, well, the first thing I want to do is send this document, right? I'm going to copy and paste this document into something somewhere. But now you're probably already wondering, where does that go? Right? So if I say send an email, 
then I can send an email and then it wants a template. And right here I can go create a new email template, which is great, but that's not always going to be that easy or possible. And I may not even be sure as I'm creating it whether it was an email template that was needed or a questionnaire or something else. So the key to this is, you know, I recommend creating the outline first. And as you'll see, what I did in the outline was in parentheses next to each item, I put what kind of a template do I need? Here it's an email. Here it's a to-do. Here it's a to-do seven days later because if you remember, when I create a new to-do item, I can establish how many days after, let's say, the previous item is completed, I want to do this, right? So it's important to outline this because at the end of the day, I'm gonna, once the outline's complete, I know what templates I need to create. So rather than just creating the templates on the fly, which I don't love to do because I feel like then I'm going to be rushing through it, even though it's great that 17 Hats gives me the ability to do this, I'd rather be more organized about it. I'd rather go create my templates first so that when I start creating my real workflow, it's very easy for me to add the action items in or add the to-do items in and know that any templates that I need are going to be there by the time I get to this part. Because that's what was happening. And you're going to see even in the write-up, and I explain this. So um, the onboarding process starts when a lead says, yes, I want to sign up and give you all of my money. Of course, I'm being funny. I hope you'll provide all your value in exchange for that. The first thing we'll need to do is get a contract out and sign. But wait, before you can do that, we have to make sure you ha we have all of your contact details. We can do all this in 17 hats. But now you can see why. Because as you start trying to you know, set up your workflow and trying to establish what needs to be done, you start realizing, wait, I can't do that until something else is done. I can't even send out a contract until I've reviewed their books. So it's important to outline this because otherwise you're going to get ahead of yourself most likely only to find that you have to go back and add things in. Now the good news is, of course, when I create a workflow, it's very easy to reorder items and change the options. So it's not the end of the world, but I like to be the most efficient I can possibly be about these things, which is why I feel it's important to outline the workflow. So let's see what I came up with. Step one, the prospect agrees to move forward. The next thing I'm going to do is send them the welcome document, which means I need the email template, right? So I need this to be basically copied and pasted into an email template. And now having gone through the outline, what I may even do is reorder some things. Um, or I may not. Like I said, it really doesn't matter for that purpose. This is just for the client to get that reassurance that, hey, we actually have a process in place. We've thought this through. We've done this before, right? So really, really important to have something like this that you can send out to the client right away. Then you, the first thing this document is going to ask them to do is to fill out a form in Smartsheet. Now you can do this in a questionnaire in 17 hats. But very honestly, I have not tested out what format the questionnaires come through in when the results come in. What I like about doing it in Smartsheet is I get it in a very linear spreadsheet format. So it's then easy to copy and paste because once I have those contact details, I'm going to compare that against the contact or they may still be a lead at that stage to make sure that I have all the information correct and to make sure that I have all the information that I need. Because I might have started out with just name, email, and phone number. But once they become a client, now I need the address. I need all kinds of other information. Because it's a bookkeeping engagement, I want their tax ID. Although, you know, some people will be weary about collecting a tax ID in an application like this. We want to make sure it's secure. So that's something you have to think about in terms of, you know, what you're comfortable with. But the bottom line is I need information. And think about it this way. I need the information that's going to be needed in order to fill out that contract. So at the very least now, if I haven't already got it, I need their address. Right, And I may need two addresses, one for billing purposes and one for you know, the project location, that sort of thing. So that's the, that's the point of having a lead form like this or a new client contact form like this so that I can have the client fill that out. Again, you can do it with a questionnaire and 17 hats. I'm just not sure of the format that that will come in and how easy that will be to sort of copy and paste. In Smartsheet, I know it's really easy to copy and paste that information. So going back to this, we send that out. And uh, once the confirmation comes from Smartsheet, we'll need a to-do item, right? So let's bold that because um, we're going to need to update the contact info in 17 hats. And then I put the note here, it can be done via questionnaire directly in 17 hats. So we'll look at that and we'll test it in the next lesson when we actually set up our templates. Um, then we need to check up, uh, check on the status of the accounting file access. Now remember this original document, among other things, gives them instructions for how to add us as a user, let's say in QuickBooks Online. And based on that, we'll need access. If, if they're a desktop user, as you can see, the instructions are here for how to make the backup and upload it via box.com. So 
<clears throat> once those instructions are provided, we'll wait seven days. If we don't have it within seven days, then we want to send a reminder and say, hey, we can't move forward until we get this accounting file from you. We need to do our review. If they get it to us prior to the seven days, then that's why this is great as a to-do item because I can just now check it off and say, okay, it's complete. And then this one is a to-do also, which at that point I would also mark complete. And notice I have it established that it's a to-do seven days later. So seven days after this item is done. Seven days after, it's really going to be after the welcome document was sent out, right? Because this is sort of inconsequential in terms of that. Next, if access to the accounting has not been made available within a week, we'll send a reminder. So if I haven't checked this off within seven days, then we're going to send an email template with a reminder. So it means I need an email template. Um, with just section four, which is this whole section here saying, hey, don't forget, we need access to your file so we can, you know, do the review and then get back to you with the contract. Uh, once the review is complete, we'll customize the contract based on scope. So you're going to see we need a contract template. And then we also need a to-do in terms of the fact that we have to edit that contract. And you'll see it's really cool how the contracts work in 17 hats. We can create the template, then go into the project, add a contract based on that template, and then customize it because once we've done the review of the books, we're going to, this is how I do things, we're going to add in specific line items that describe what's going to be kept up to date on a month-to-month -month basis. Uh, you know, and it's basically stuff that's I'm pulling right off the balance sheet after reviewing their books to determine is their accounts receivable. If there is, this is what we're going to do for that, and so on and so forth. So I literally define the scope based on the balance sheet, and that, of course, comes right out of the review that we're doing. Once I have all that done and I know what I'm going to charge them, I can, you know, again, create that contract. And once the contract has been, uh, you know, uh, customized, then we can send it out. So that's another email template that goes out with the contract that we're sending out. Then the contract gets signed. Now, this is all done electronically, so that's beautiful. So I need an email template uh, and, of course, in a, uh, an invoice that I'm going to send out with the email. So an email template to go saying, hey, here's an invoice for your retainer. Please make payment ASAP and so on and so forth. So I need that email template to go out with the invoice. So we're going to create an invoice and send. So, so actually, let's add in a step. Look at that. See, again, I'm reviewing it. Create invoice, because you have to get granular like this. So we need an invoice template for that. And we'll call it a retainer invoice template. So you have to get this granular for this reason. Otherwise, you're going to get stuck in the middle of trying to set up the workflow and realize that you haven't created what you need. And it's just going to slow you down, that's all. It's just, I think, better to have it outlined this way. So once the contract is signed, then we'll send out the... Uh, this should come afterwards, actually. So contract is signed. Then we'll send the invoice out. Or we'll create the invoice, then we'll send the invoice. Right, so very, very granular, very, very specific on this. So this is a to-do. And you'll see how this actually comes together when we're setting this up. Then once the invoice is sent, we wait for the retainer to be paid. Once the retainer is paid, we send an email with a Schedule Once link. Schedule Once is a service I use for scheduling so that the client can set up those four weekly appointments that we referenced higher up in this document right here, right? So what that means is we need an email template that's just going to include the link and says, hey, thank you so much for paying the retainer. We're now ready to get started. Please use this link to schedule the four appointments that we're going to have on a weekly basis so that we can make sure the onboarding process goes as smoothly as it can possibly go. A day later, if they haven't followed up on this already, because this is really important to get this going very quickly, otherwise you kind of lose traction. Next thing you know, the client says, oh, I never heard from you. I hired somebody else. So a day later, we're going to send a reminder, and then we're also going to expand on it and say, by, and by the way, here, here's the purpose of these four meetings. So if they thought maybe it wasn't a big deal or that important, now they'll see the importance of it when they see this email that goes out to them a day later. And the, you know, the rest of this is really just, I, I think, uh, you, know, you just want to think about how much confidence is going to give the client that you really have a, a detailed process ironed out, that you really know what you're doing, that you really have done this before. And it's going to give them that sort of constant reassurance that they, they keep getting these emails and these reminders, OK, we need this, we need this, we've got to do this, we've got to schedule the calls, and so on and so forth. I think it goes a long way to making your client's experience 
really remarkable so that they'll want to refer you to people before they even get started with you they see the process like this they're going to say oh my god i got to tell my friends about this guy he's amazing it's so organized i feel so confident that i know exactly what's going on and exactly what's happening and when and so on and so forth and the personalized attention the four weekly calls i got that idea from a podcast that i was listening to that i said you know what that just makes sense it might you know seem like it's going to cost a lot for me up front to take the time to do that but once I've done that and the client becomes a client and, and they have such confidence in us, you know, it's going to go such a long way. It's going to build so much equity in terms of my brand and how my process works that it's going to be so worth it in the long run. A little extra time today means a lot less time having to be spent later on doing damage control because the client's frustrated because they didn't know what was going on. That, my friends, is how you outline your workflow process before you go in. So next what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how to set up the templates that we need now that we've identified what templates we need. And then in the last lesson for this course, we're going to actually design the workflows and we're going to see what that all looks like. As always, my friends, I hope you learned something and had some fun along the way. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day and look forward to seeing you in the next lesson. Now that we've got an outline written, and assuming you've actually followed along and done one for yourself, then you've likely encountered what I encountered when I did mine, which is that in the process I identified templates that I hadn't thought of previously that needed to get created. And this underscores why it's so important to do the outline before you get into the actual product to create the workflow that you're ultimately looking to create. So now let's move along into how to create the templates that we need now that we've identified what they are in order to put the workflow together.